I got I got to mention something at the top of this coffee hang. Uh, by, right. the, by the way, uh, Frank. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, so I got to I got to mention a couple things. One, we feel we got this this down, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Like that to me. Like what we're seeing right now. Yeah. That works. Boom. Well, when the video finally renders, like last time when we did that, I was so proud of us. And there was oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we weren't pumping the wrong way. So that and Jill, Jill just gave me a hard time this morning. She goes, "Dude, why don't you guys learn where to cheers?" I'm like, "We did. We figured." <laughs> and another thing she gives me heck about is that I, I got this going on every day. I guess I drink my coffee with my elbow up in the air. I don't know. I'm all, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, welcome well, to Coffee we're Head. Better, we were doing this for a while, too. Hey, hi, Ed. How you doing? <laughs> I'm peeking around coffee. So, today? Today. I'm going to sort it out, Frank. I said to Jill, if I drink coffee like this, i got to have the... You stick the pinky in it. <laughs> well, you know, I said, our guest today is a tea drinker. Oh. So, that so was quite appropriate that you... Like, uh, this is my tea time of drinking. And this is like, I got to get some coffee in you. Let's get to work. <laughs> this is, I got, I got work to do. It's all business here. This is all fun. This is all business. I, like, this, this is, I'm dying. Oh, I don't even know what that is. This is, where's the IV? Where's the IV? <laughs> anyway, Mr. Frank, pretty yes. yesterday, huh? Yes, we got a guest today. We got a, should we talk about him and bring him on? Oh, yes, you please tell us. Go ahead, Frankie. Tell us all about him. Well, we got Christopher Claus today. We'll get on to when I met him, probably 2003, so a little while ago. But he's a, uh, he's a Hamilton Music Award, a four-time Hamilton Music Award winner, and we'll discuss the Hamilton Music Awards uh, in depth here. He's one of Hamilton's best-kept secrets. His, his solo acoustic guitar work with his jam man loop have become the stuff of legend. He's able to recreate the feeling of a full band by the work of his hands, his feet, creating a wall of sound that Phil Spector would be proud of. You know, and Phil Spector is a big Beatles wall of sound guy. Yeah. So he's Phil also a champ. <laughs> That's for another interview. I'm just joking here. <laughs> joking. He's a huge champion of Hamilton musicians. His musical charity work has raised over thirty thousand dollars for those in need in the city. Thirty thousand dollars. That's huge, man. Just, just, you know, uh, uh, and and oh. you've you've actually helped you've helped out on a couple of shows in that in the past too, I believe so. Or he's been involved where we've been together on stuff. So. Um, and at his, his most recent efforts through Grace Notes, uh, he has organized tribute shows to help fund local independent music projects. When I did my record, I received a, a second place prize and it helped. It was a massive amount of help on, on getting my, my record made. Wow, cool. So he does that kind of stuff. Um, during the pandemic, pandemic, he has been performing two live shows a week on Facebook from his home studio, one being specifically devoted to the music of the Beatles, he is the current worship pastor at GraceWorks Baptist Church. They're doing, I believe, everything online right now. Uh, when not on stage performing or in the studio, he can be found in a local record shop flipping through the bins or sipping tea off the coast of France. Oh, <laughs> I, I just read that. Record shop and port credit or, or sipping tea off the coast of France. <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big specter. That's right. Anyways, that's, that's, uh, he just finished, uh, when this airs, he just finished recreating the Rubber Soul record uh, last Friday, July 17th. Cool. Uh, and he's got a couple things coming up uh, down the pipe, uh, recreating Revolver in August, and the Love You Make show that's going to be going on in September. We'll talk more about that. Tickets are already available for sale on this. Uh, it's online show. A, a, live, a live show or online show? online show but it, 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 online. He, yeah, good. He, he gave me a little information about this a few days ago when i brought him some decaf so he will uh he will extrapolate from there and, and give some more information I'm excited so let's get him Christopher on here i want to see what he's got as a background you're in okay drum roll please <laughs> that's not a drum roll that's a beat come on frank <laughs> Oh, he's got it right. Hello, how are you guys? Hey, hey. I recognize you, dude. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now you know who Christopher is. I totally know. Totally yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Ed? Fantastic, brother. Awesome. I have a familiar face, as they say. Yeah. Okay, I have to say, Frank, I'm loving that guitar behind you. It looks good on you. 
Just that, saying. That, the little, the, uh, the Rickenbacker. I'm just hard to point Correct. behind. Okay, there you go. That guy. Uh, yes, it does. Courtesy of Craig Martin from Classic Albums Live. Have to make a plug. <laughs> nice. That's good. That's good to do that. No. Uh, but so it's not my guitar. I wish it was, uh, but you know, it's probably needs some tuning right now. I haven't played it since February, but. Well, it is a Rickenbacker. Depending how old it is, it does need. If it's a twelve string, forget it. But. Well, it just it is a twelve string, and it just needs tuning all the time. You know? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Sorry, add two guitar players once again. So okay. listen, I have prepared <laughs> myself to take a back seat on this one all day long. You got a cot set up, hey, Christopher. Let's look at this backdrop. Wow. Look at those records. Well, is that a listening area? I love this little listening hang here. This is kind of my studio. So in the front, which you can't see, is of course the iMac. And I do lots of sort of home recording and mastering and mixing. And I've got my two monitor speakers here. And then sort of behind me is just sort of a little, you know, little lounging area. And yeah, I have tons of records because, you know, when everyone sold theirs for CDs, I only sold a handful for getting some rare Beatles ones and then kept all my records because, you know, I love them. And I'm so glad I did because... Yeah, it's become a really good thing to do to relax, is just yeah. to put on a record, so I'm happy. Yeah, it, just, it, it sounds different when you listen to analog records than digital files. Yeah. On the, on the years, sure. you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's, yeah, a, and I think, it's amazing all the different elements to listening to records, like from the, from the needle to, like you, from your deck to the needle, to your amplifier, to your speakers, like, all of those steps change that sound. Yeah, completely. And, and that's why audio files go crazy because they can spend years and years trying to perfect their systems. And I'm, I'm not that picky myself. I've got a good turntable and I use my, like my monitor speakers in here to use as, as listening speakers because they're fairly neutral and I just have gotten used to liking them. And if I want more bass and I just turn up more bass, you know, if I need them, you know, so yeah. yeah. But there's something nice about, uh, analog records staying in the analog stream so those that were recorded to tape and then put to disc you know every, every time i hear those records there's a different sound than if you have a digital file that's thrown onto onto vinyl or to records you know so it's it's uh, it's a very yeah it's almost like you want to just stay in the same stream you know you either stay in analog or stay in digital i think that's you know it's sad because i've heard some really good digital recordings that sound great on vinyl and i've heard some that are terrible so yeah, yeah. You know. well, we know yours sounds great on vinyl well thank you thank you and that, <laughs> that was a labor of love too but we can talk about that one later so. we of course we'll get into all that kind yeah. of stuff um, yeah, yeah yeah so i, I introduced uh, i introduced you uh we had met i think when was it like 2003 i think so it, yes it would have been around the time of the hamilton music scene cd uh, yeah and that's how I sort of got to know you guys was through your Punch Buggy Yellow song. And I was like, oh, that's a great song. And it was, there were two songs that really stuck out to me that I, I liked. And one was Mary Simon's song and one was your song. So I remember in the, I think it was the old days of MySpace. I think I sent you a message on MySpace saying, hey, hey can we be friends? You know, and we didn't know each other at that point, but you know, and then we got to know each other really well. And, yeah. you know, and I have to say, Ed, you know, Frank, as well as Kim have been big supporters of all the Beatles fundraiser shows we've done over the years. And we've played together lots and in those, you know, in those things. And they've always been so generous of their time. And, and uh, yeah, we've, we've had lots of fun. So, hey, so yeah. on doing that, brother, that's huge. I didn't know that. That's, hats off to you. That's Thank you. Awesome. well, it, it was something that was, you know, I was working at this church in downtown Hamilton that was this beautiful gothic sounding room. Not so great for rock and roll, but it felt a bit like, you know, like those psychedelic shows back in the mid 60s or, you know, 67 that Pink Floyd would do in these big gargantuan you know churches you know get the lights going and stuff and have some fun but it was it was a way to get people in the building for people just to commune and get together and you know i have some i mean very fond memories and sad that the old building is half gone uh yeah. but uh you know it, it, it became a you know we were having out of the coal programs and thought well we've got to have a way to feed them and to take care of them and the heat was the big cost so we said let's do the shows whatever money we make goes towards the heat and hydro so that's yeah. uh that's what happened, and it was great. It was a it was a fun time. It was a good season. Yeah, yeah. Those were uh, those were uh, those were good times, and we're going to get back into some of that. Um, yeah. Right now, right now, I uh, I did say that you're doing two uh, two live streams a week, uh, but COVID, yeah. um, the obvious music is 
stopped. You know, you're a busy performer as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, what have you been doing through COVID? And, and well, you know, I've been, you know, doing the usual, taking care of the family. I've been the resident driver because now uh, I have two kids, one that's 21 and one that is going to turn 17 in December. So uh, my seven, my almost 17 year old just got a job. So now I just, I actually, that's why I, I just dropped him off on my way coming back here. Uh, and my daughter, uh, she's doing a nursing program. So she's uh, working as a PSW in one of the long-term cares in Hamilton. Actually, one of the better ones. So we're, it's a safe one. Wow. So, uh, I, so, you know, as a parent, of course, I get, you know, they're in the public. Oh, they're dealing with this. And, you know, and at the same time, I'm like, we also have to live and we have to continue to live. So yeah. I'm happy that my kids are doing something that's, you know, that's a value and is helping people. You know. back, yeah. yeah, that's Absolutely. amazing. I, I didn't know she was, uh, was a frontline worker there. No. Yep, she she is now, and she's um, she's enjoying it. I mean, it's been very hard work because you know she's was on a dementia ward, and that that presents a whole lot of other problems and challenges. And but you know she's got such a gentle heart that it's um, yeah. We've had lots of discussions after work, let's say, uh, lots of detox and lots of you know yeah. decompression, right, of what's happened in the day. But um, but she's she's you know she's. She's in the right place to be a nurse, I think. You know, her heart, her, her, you know, the way she just lives, that's her, the energy matches that profession, I think, yeah. so. It's like, that, it's like that with teachers too, right? Like, yes. you know, they're the good ones out there that are gonna do, you know, those are the ones we want to teach our children. And then there's exactly. the that are just in it for the job. And like, my niece is a, is a nurse as well in BC, and the same sort of thing. She just loves everything about it. So that's yeah. the people we want taken care of, the people that need to be taken care of. Exactly. The people that are just there for the for the paycheck, yeah. Yeah. And that's you can see cool. it, right? And you see it. Yeah. Yeah, and I she's your kid, 21 and 16, 17 now. <laughs> well, your I, kids are I, all adults, I mean. I know, well, they, yes, I know, but I you know, mine just they're just mine, whatever. They're just older they're pain they're in pain in the butt cuz they're my kids, but I remember when your kids were little, you know, fidget pots and you know. Yep. Oh, your yeah. shows and stuff like that because your shows were always family uh family oriented so you can people anyone can show up with the kids or whatever yeah. but I, I think that first show we did or the first time we met was at the casbah pre hamilton music it was even before the hamilton music awards were called the hamilton music awards oh and really I remember you coming up to kim and i because we were kind of like we'd never been you know i'd been playing outside of the city so i didn't really know a lot of people and uh and I just remember you coming up and saying, I just love this song. It was uh, Divided was the song. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I went, oh, that's the, that's the guy. I, I, I don't know if it was that year, but I saw your picture in the paper because you were doing the George Harrison show. Right. Yeah. It was right around that time. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. It was a great song. I just thought, well, I want to get to know people in the, in the scene. And, you know, uh, I'd come out of teaching high school music for, you know, Oh yeah, you know, almost like a dozen years, and had my had my sort of mental breakdown and had midlife crisis, and you know needed to get out, and I did, and got involved in ministry, and I thought, well, it's time to do music as well. So that's how that kind of developed. But uh, yeah, and I just remember thinking, yeah, these guys seem really cool. So I'm glad we met that day. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, Christopher, see, this is I don't I know a lot about you, but I know about you from that point on. So let's go back. Um, as far back as you want to go. I mean, infant, yeah. toddler, you know, where are your music and your passion for music? I know your, yeah. your um, uh, sister, uh, rest her soul, uh, was a huge part of that. Um, yeah. So, uh, and we, we, we had an episode last week where we discussed Sam the Record Man, and I know that's a big part of it. It is, yeah. You're, you're, well, so. I mean, I'll go back just to saying, I, I, there's a picture of me as a kid sleeping in a, um, you know, in a crib, and underneath me is a Capitol record, like a, like record capital records and it had to have been a beatles record it had to have been so i'm like really because you know how many beetle how many records we've had by capital records back in the 60s yeah, yeah, yeah. that the rainbow label with the special you know wow and i thought yeah okay that makes sense and i just you know i remember i have an early memory about when i was five which would have taken me to about 1970 seeing a commercial on tv for let it be the film like the movie yeah. and thinking mm -hmm. oh, it didn't, uh, but I remember it now, but it was kind of like, oh, that's weird. And then it fast forward three more years, which was 1973. My other sister, Mary, which Debbie was very pivotal in my music um, making and creating as well. 
But I have to blame Mary, my surviving sister, who actually bought 62 to 66 and living in the material world. Why she bought the George Harrison album, I'll never know, but I'm glad she did. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then um, I kept hearing it next door. And then one Sunday morning on WKBW TV, the movie for a Sunday afternoon was The Beatles Help. And I'm like, wow, that is fun. That is like... I want to do that. Like that just seems so much fun. You know, the scene for Ticket to Ride in the Snow, I was like, that's so great. You know, and I thought it was just, it was almost like, I don't remember much before then, but I do remember that moment watching that movie and it was kind of like, oh, you know, everything sort of made sense after that. So, and then I just thought, well, my, actually my first instrument, Ed, was actually the drums. I remember I had an old Stuart sort of blue sparkle kit, which oh, I wish you. I had now. Looked like a Ringo kit then. It looked a bit like a Ringo kit, but it was Stuart, you know, the old Stuart kits, which are fantastic. There you go. Is that a Stuart? Oh, kit? A Stuart. What are you doing with a snare drum in your house is what I want to know. <laughs> well, it's Kim's. Oh, that, wow. Now that is allowed because she is a drummer, so that's okay. She is a drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Put that down. You stop touching that. <laughs> Last week I brought up the tambourine. It's like I just <laughs> there are union rules against that, right? <laughs> no, Ed, Ed's a big guy too. I'm just uh, yeah. he says put it down, just put it down. <laughs> what Ed says, Ed Ed gets. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. I've I've learned to let that one go a little bit. <laughs> I'm still a big baby, but hey. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, and um, I love. I loved playing the drums and my favorite part of it was my big sizzle cymbal that I had. I love that yeah. thing. And I, oh, yeah. I kind of rivets? kept yeah, with rivets, yeah, with the nails in it just whoosh. Oh yeah, dude. Love Great. it. Love it. I've so, drilled, you know how many cymbals I've drilled holes in and put pop rivets in and <laughs> now does that still work or do you really wreck the cymbal if you drill well, the holes? You know what? I think like I, I I think it takes it takes a toll on it, on the tone of it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going after that sound, then it kind of masks that tone. So what I do now, though, is I get a bath. I go and buy bathtub chains. Oh, okay. So that little hole, like the, or the little ring at the top of the bathtub chain, you take your wing nut off, and you right. put it under the foamy and put the wing nut on, and the bathtub chain, you can cut it any length, and right. it'll sizzle on the ride. Yeah, it's, it's a and good it thing. Great. Yeah, it sounds great. And you have it in your, in your stick bag and carrying it with you kind of thing, so... And there you go. Brought to you by MacGyver. Uh... <laughs> I have many of them. It's one of many. But that's great because then you you know you you don't ruin the symbol in the sense of you get multiple use out of it, which is great. Yeah. So when you're traveling, yeah. you know. I was fine you, with the drills, the drill mark or the drill holes. After a while, would just start to crack from right. the vibration of hitting the symbol. Then you start to get cracks, and that's when the symbol goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at some point, I'm gonna get. A drum kit for myself so when i do i'm gonna do that to do the because i i i just love that sound i just love it yeah yeah it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> all right so, so you were a drummer first so i was a drummer first and then i realized that all the girls checked out the guitar player so i'm like okay screw it i'm gonna be a guitar player yeah. you know and then did and then uh, i actually started playing left-handed that was my first sort of you know experience in playing guitar it just felt natural and felt right. Even though I'm right-handed, it just felt right. Got to high school and, you know, did guitar and music class. And my teacher, Bodam Wisniewski, you gotta love that name. He was, he was <laughs> a classic jazz bass player. Little, like bigger guy, goatee, you know. He'd be like, you know what, man, you're number one with me. And he'd be sticking up that famous, you know, finger, right? You know, and that'd be before a show. We just, you know, he was fantastic. He was a great inspiration. But he's like, man, he said, start learning the guitar the other way. Because it's just, you're going to spend more money trying to get a left-handed guitar than right. Just so I'm like, okay. So then I flipped. And then that was that. Was it yeah. really bizarre right off the top? Or like, do you find that you're, you're at, like, you can both do both sides there? I thought it. To, at the time, I thought it was easy. So, and it was like, it was a nice parlor trick. You'd go to a, to go to a party and go, da, 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 and then whoop, da, 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 da. <laughs> Now, today I can't do it. It's so funny. If I switch, and I, being a classical guitar player, I still have nails, right? So it's almost impossible. Yeah. But if I do it now, you can see that those were my hands back in 1978 and they haven't developed. And then you go here and it's like, oh, wow, there's quite a difference here. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the motor muscle, just all the physical stuff is, is so different now. So 
I, I could probably play bass this way. So if I was in a Beatles tribute, I could probably pull that off. Yeah. But anything more complex, I don't have the, the stretching in this hand. I don't have the, you know, yeah. So, but it was fun. It was fun. And I'm glad he, he I'm glad he did that when Buddy made that suggestion because it's, um, yeah. It's helped save, get you for guitars. Save you money. <laughs> well, I didn't say you might have just bought more guitars. <laughs> exactly. I bought more guitars. <laughs> Oh, and then, um, yeah, so then I, you know, decided that music was what I wanted to do, but I wanted to go legit. So I thought, well, I want to do some sort of, you know, school for music. And I thought, well, it's to university. And um, the story was a weird one. I applied coming out of high school to three schools. And one was York, one was Mac, and I think the other was, I can't remember now, let's just say McGill, just as, just, just, you know, saying a third school. And I had applied for business at McMaster and I applied for law at York and then something else. Well, I got acceptances to all the three schools, which was great, but I wanted to do music. So then what I did was I changed the application to make it into a music program. So York did it automatically. It was a paper shuffle. They just went, okay, He's changed his major from law to math or to music. That's great. <laughs> so they did it, but there were no theory tests. There was no audition, nothing. Wow. Right. So it was like, so I get there and they're like, yeah, well, we see here, you haven't done your theory exam. And I'm like, my theory back then was awful. I mean, I loved my high school music teacher, but he was like, go to the back room and practice. Yeah, you know, yeah. come back and play. Go to the back room and practice and come and play, you know. So for the theory classes, I missed a whole lot. You know, I rem I got one, four, five, and eight are perfect. Why? Because. Exactly. And that was it. That was it. That was it. That, that's what I remembered. So I went there, I wrote this theory exam, which was awful. The first question was write the melody of O Canada. And I'm like, oh hey! perfect. <laughs> I, you know, I have to edit that out. Sorry. And I, I'm like, okay, I figured the notes, you know, but I'm like, I had no idea with rhythm to write down the rhythm. And I thought, you know, so anyway, they said, look, you've got an acceptance here. You can go into the program, no problem, but the, you're going to fail all your first year theory courses. And I'm like, Great. okay. So I went sort of dejected. They didn't even want to hear me play. That, that wasn't even an issue. <laughs> the issue was, could I do the theory? And looking back, I could have done it. I could, there, Looking back on it, I could have done that because I, you know, that summer was like, what do I do now? So then it was a matter of, okay, I think let's regroup. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to do business at Mac. That's fine. And then I did a year of business and the, I took a one A6 music course with uh, Lee Hepner, who is Darcy Hepner's dad. Mm -hmm. And he was fantastic. And I love the course. And I'm like, this is where I need to be. This is where I need to be. So I remember thinking, screw it. I'm just going to go and do music at Mac. So then, again, my theory was crappy. So I you know, got a tutor. I worked on theory, built it up, did my audition for classical guitar. I couldn't decide whether to do classical or jazz. And I just felt more affinity to classical at that point. And it was all self-taught. Like it was stuff that I had read, things that I'd done. I just went and said, you know, like doing a trill at the end. Like I didn't know if I was doing the right kind of trills. And, and I, I looked at, Lee Hepner and Hugh Hartwell, the guy who was doing the, the, you know, the audition. And I'm like, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I said, who's your teacher? I said, I don't have one. <laughs> so, so by the grace of God, because I wasn't that great, but by the grace of God and the fact that they were wanting to develop their guitar program, they let me in. Oh, wow. So, so that was it. And they also looked at the 1A6 mark and went, this guy is okay. He's got good ears. This will work. So mm -hmm. And that, and that was, that was it. And then I, I have to say, I love being in school and I, I learned so much. Like I was just that first year, I was just a sponge learning all these things and, you know, you know, and the plan was, yeah, I'll be a high school music teacher. That's the plan. So that was sort of the, the narrative. Right. And then, but you know, life always throws you curveballs and the story changed. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> no, no. The pandemics. You know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. One minute you're playing music in a club and the next minute you're selling coffee, you know, which, <laughs> which by the way, it almost sounds dirty. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. in the back of a truck. Yeah. Which, by the way, I have my morning buzz sticker, which I can't decide which guitar case to put it on yet. So I've, oh, I've awesome. awesome. Yeah. Love it. You Love know. it. And, and you know, of course, Frank, and I'm not sure if Ed knows this, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but I'm a tea drinker, but my girls love coffee. So we had picked up, 
uh, some buzzkill and lightheaded, and we've hit the buzzkill, and they love it, so it's great. So, great. Awesome. Well done. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So today I'm drinking some Earl Grey from my Charlie Brown mug. Oh, that's <laughs> dude, that's our colors. That's well, and, see, and that that wasn't planned, but that's so amazing. <laughs> it's just I've always peanuts are kind of like um, <laughs> another <laughs> spiritual <laughs> element. <laughs> you take the right, I'll take the left hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we we often don't know where we are in relation to you sometimes in this thing because the zoom shows one way but it records sometimes weird so right yeah well, so right I'm next to Ed and you're below me guess is always on the bottom yeah. yeah in in the video we we took gotcha. it took us it's only ten episodes. it yeah. took us ten episodes to clink our cups right <laughs> ah, that's still gonna be wrong so then yeah. if I do this is that right uh, well, if you got you got to come up for me okay. So I, can pour you, I can pour you some coffee. You just click the bottom of the cup. <laughs> okay. Boom. There, there you go, yeah. I forgot we were supposed to get that. That's usually off the intro. We get the cup, coffee cup out of the way. Anyway. Oh, we, okay. Will that work? Do we have to do it again? No, no. It's, it's explode. Speaking okay. of curveballs, we get curveballs on the show all the time. That's part mm -hmm. of the fun of this whole show is uh, curveballs. Yeah. Well, musicians. So you're in Syria. You're, you're teaching music now. Where were you teaching? Was it in Hamilton? Uh, I taught in, yeah, I taught at Hamilton District Christian High School. I had applied to all like the boards and, and uh, that one came up and it was a private school. And I thought, great. And um, yeah, it was 12 really good years. The last one, not so great, but and we won't talk about that. But no, no, it, that's, that's yeah. life. It happens. Yeah. Life happens. And then, life uh, and then yeah, life happens. Uh, what's, just, what's the narrative from that point? Then I, um, well, from that point on, it was a matter of, okay, it's time to reinvent myself. And, you know, I've always wanted to play and always wanted to make my own music and to write and to, you know, to do that sort of stuff. And, you know, I found with teaching, you were always, you know, you had the summer, but you really didn't. Like your summer was kind of coping and, you know, recoping. And in one of the last summers before I left, I had done... Um, this album at home. I just had gotten a, a, a Mac and was sort of getting into home recording that way on the digital end of things. And I did an album called Blue Suburban Skies, which was my Beatles tribute album. Cool. And uh, it was just, it was really, it was cathartic in terms of being able to go and go back to the music you loved as a kid. And it kind of became the spark for, I really want to do my own music too again. So then it became a matter of writing again and doing stuff. And then the church that I was attending one of their parishioners had died and uh, had left money to the church, which nowadays that's pretty rare for that to happen nowadays. But back then that was 2001, 2001. And um, they let, he left me money in his will and he specifically designated it for worship for the church. And it was for a part-time worship pastor. So my pastor at the time, Don Barry Graham said to me, he came to me and said, look, he said, you know, I know you'll never leave teaching, but you know, this, we really love for you to do that. And then when things happened in my life that were, you know, my midlife crisis, I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> I would love to do it. And then it became a total, total change. And, you know, it was nice because I didn't feel alone anymore. Cause as a music teacher, I was always, you know, in the music room, you know, when I was there, I was on and I was on until I left the room. Right. Which was meaning going home, yeah. whether you have morning practices or you had, you know, at meeting lunches, you know, with the students to make sure that, you know, things were okay. You did tutorial stuff and then after school rehearsals, right? So by the time you got home, you were exhausted. So it left me little room to create my own music, to write anything like that. So um, now working at a church, I had this guy who was like, the first thing you're going to do is this and take care of yourself. You're going to start reading, you know, take time to invest in yourself. And at that point, I had been in a, in a, in a life mode of, do, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and don't stop. With no real time for reflection or to, you know, to pause, no real Sabbath, right? And, uh, and Dom was the first guy to say, no, man, you need to invest in yourself. You need to do this. And then it became a totally different thing. So he's like, well, we, we want you to go out and to be in the city making music. And we want you to do this here. And we want you to, you know, to create new music and music for the church. And so that's what happened. And it was, it was like, a weight had been lifted from me, you know, and um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, and it's, it's, 
it's been great. I'm, I was sad because our, because Don had retired two years ago. So now I'm sort of back to being alone. Uh, we have a new senior pastor, uh, but she's now going off on maternity leave in September. So I'll be on my own again. <laughs> Yay. A little wiser. You know. Yeah, a little wiser. Exactly. You yeah. know, but it's, it's again with COVID and how things are going, it's been very important for me, even though the government has said we can get back together it's not the right time for our community. So we've had kind of a three stage approach where our first stage has been, I've been doing live gatherings or, or services from my home with my family leading and sending that out for the church and doing that through Facebook Live. And that's worked out great. And then we have Zoom meetings during the week for like small group things or just connecting. And we'll have like a virtual coffee hour um, that we would do on Sundays, right? So right after the gathering, we head off to Zoom and then we would connect with people that way. So that worked out really well. Yeah. Um, so that's phase one and we're in that right now. Um, we are gonna be, we were at the Spectator, which as you guys both know, the Spectator has sold and we had to move. Mm -hmm. So in the, trans, just before COVID hit, we actually moved from the Spectator to the Pearl Company. And we did a couple of gatherings there. Um, and. Gary and Barb have been great to let us use that space, but for our kids ministry, we needed a different space for them than what could be offered there. So just before, like literally that first week in March, we had confirmed with Annette Paymont that we were going to be at the cotton factory. Oh, so amazing. our church will meet there in that big space on the second floor. Yeah, yeah. So, so theoretically, our church could do 30% capacity in that large room because we're not a big church right now. Um, but I still feel it's not right. So phase two for us will be getting myself, the senior pastor, and a small worship team together, and we're going to still broadcast live from there. But that's, yeah, yeah. you know, phase in slowly. And then when we feel that the numbers are right, that we go to phase three, which is we bring the community back together. So, right. mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think, you know, lots of people have asked, well, Doug Ford, why would he, you know, put such pressure on that? Because he's saying people of groups of 10 can meet. But then he's saying 30% of a room, and some of our churches are quite large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30% is way more than 10 people. And yeah. like, so to me, it just seems it, it's going against the whole, <laughs> it's going against the spirit of the thing, right? You know, it's like, we're trying to kill this bug. We're trying to, you know, to level it so that we can go back to real life again. So anyway. So that's kind of what we're doing and the push towards that. But um, it's been a, it's been a great opportunity and it's been good for my family to be working for the church which was first james street and now grace work so it's been great and then they've allowed me the freedom to to do music so that's great yeah so that's and then and you when did when did your beatles tribute start it was shortly thereafter then i guess it was shortly thereafter it would have been 2002 was the first for george okay. yeah and yeah. it was around the anniversary of his passing and it was basically i went to chris jameson my bass player friend and said well, Chris, my dad's got a barn. Do you have some costumes? Let's put on a show. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, well, do you want to just get together and play some George music on the anniversary? He's like, great. And I said, well, you know what? We'll put some posters up and we'll say like five bucks and it'll go towards heat and hydro for out of the cold. Great. Okay, let's do it. And then we had no idea that it was going to grow to what it was. Then we got invitations from Brody to do shows at the Casbah. And then we got, you know, invitations to do, you know, other venues in the city and, you know, and then it ends up that we eventually get to uh, to doing this really cool show at the Studio Theater at Hamilton Place, you know, because the Lennon show had grown so much that we then, we could do that. And, you know, it, the, the, they were fun times, you they know. Were, and it, they were so much fun. Are you doing these shows with a full band? Full band. Yeah. And our, our plan always was, and it was kind of, in my mind, fashioned against like the concert for Bangladesh kind of thing. You know, I, I always loved that sort of, fundraiser approach and George was the first to do it really George Harrison was the first to have that you know method of doing getting together to raise money for something that's important and I love that he used two drummers too Ringo and Jim Keltner but anyway we won't, we won't get into that so um but yeah I love Jim Keltner but anyway yeah um so, about that? <laughs> yeah well we, and we can you're, you're talking to an original drummer right so I I'm just about to walk, walk off the stage. I have no idea. see you guys <laughs> can you get coffee please this whole interview is turning right around. Like, I, <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I <laughs> well, see, that's how my brain doesn't work. Like, it's like, squirrel. <laughs> it's like, I'll follow you wherever you go, but it's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so anyway, so I love that vibe. So I always thought it was important for the shows to have a good house band to be like the center of it. And then you have guests come on and do their thing. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've always been blessed to have these great musicians who are committed and are, you know, believe in what we're doing and, you know, prepare the charts and do the time and, and do so well, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the joy has been getting people together. And part of the camaraderie is what I'm really missing right now with COVID-19. I'm really missing getting together on a stage with musicians and just playing, you know? Oh, yeah. Just, you know, yeah. 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 So in the it's meantime, gonna yeah. It's going to be an amazing day when we get to do that again, you know, oh, in, any, in yeah. any form, in any genre right now. Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. So. Yes. And, uh, and out of the cold, so there was a couple, out of the cold was a program. How now, when did that run from in the city? Or is it still running? I can't remember. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's still running. Yeah. Uh, but it stopped being an overnight quite a few years ago. So, because what was happening at the time was that, um, the government funding was going to be up uh, in arms because we had all of these um, other programs happening. And because there were so many, you know, opportunities going on that it was limiting the number of people that were going to these shelters that were being funded. So to do that out of the cold made the decision, okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to stop doing overnights, but we'll still do, you know, food, shelter you know, and do that sort of thing and then of course we haven't been there in, in so long because of course um with, with Jacob street being gone the building yeah. itself then we haven't been a part of that but you know there's been thoughts of once we get back into a regular building uh then we'll see what happens we could do it again yeah yeah, yeah that was amazing there was uh, so if you don't out of the cold it was um for homeless in hamilton particularly from what november December through to March. Yep. Uh, yep. Have a place for them to sleep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And it, Which, there was some records done like that too. The, the Design Hope records were helping raise the money. So I think there was three or four of those. You were involved in them. Well, uh, I was. And that was through Dan Medikovic. And and again, it's funny how the paths cross. But it was you know I was brought on because of my my work with you know out of the cold. And James Street was the first church to say yes to Sister Carol Ann. They were the very first church to say let's do it. And I remember Pastor Don saying, look, well, if we're still open, we're going to make it happen. But, you know, because we didn't know if we were going to even stay open as a church. So. Just before we get back into that story, okay, I got, I got to mention something. Can you, can you grab your cup again? My cup for sure. So we were talking about the, the arm. Because my wife was giving me a hard time that in all the other interviews, I do this when I drink. Oh. And yep. I've come to realize that now looking at how you drink, that's the difference between a tea drinker, right? Coffee drinker. Coffee drinker. <laughs> well, see, it's a coffee drinker who's protecting his drink. It's like get away. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Right. elbow. This it's is a like, lot of money right here. Do a touch, you know. <laughs> it's the Dracula. Once, yeah. Once, yeah. Once the third one's in, then you're fine. You know. Then it's I, like then you relax. Okay, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas for me, it's like, I'm drinking tea. No one's going to steal this. I'm good. So. <laughs> well. It's so much more relaxed. <laughs> it's <laughs> so intense. This is like, <laughs> I kind of like that, though. You know, it's like, yeah. That's what I said to Jill. I'm like, this needs business. I'm ready to go. Get some coffee in me. Let's get this done. Let's start the day. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. So, you, you, did, you did mention tea. And we, there are, yeah. you know, we, we, we have future plans of perhaps introducing we do uh, well future we've talked we've talked about <laughs> it <laughs> i think the, <laughs> it's so confusing yeah tea, honey, all <laughs> yes. you're getting it that's good all right but yeah well, can we continue the cold program yeah out of the cold yes yeah um, so yeah, so it became a matter of we we really wanted to to make a difference and to you know continue to serve that community and um, but every time we use that large Gothic cathedral known as James Street, the minute you open the door, all the heat just blew out the window or out the, the door rather, and it was just you know they the heating costs were astronomical. So the shows became a way to sort of def defer some of those costs, mm -hmm. and it got to the point that we were doing so well on those shows that we had more money left over. Then we had to say, well, here's the thing. <laughs> now 
paid for the bills for the hydro. Now we're going to do something else now with the extra money that we make. So, and then uh, it wasn't shortly there. Well, it wasn't long after that, that we, we were done. And, you know, we just, the, the church community just felt, well, we had one family in particular and the, uh, the gentleman of the family, um, young gentleman, very young, was an engineer at Mac. And he said, every time I look at that wall, it makes me really uncomfortable. And if you're going to stay in this building, we're not staying with you. And we're like, okay. To me, that was like, you know, because the building became so many things for me. Obviously, it was a place to worship, but it was a, it was our, our concert hall. For me, it was a recording studio because I bring all my gear there and record. Mm -hmm. The drums were so cool in there. It was sort of, you know, you could get that nice John Bonham sort of sound, right? You know, yeah. um, and also get some really tight sounds in some of the corner rooms, right? So. Um, and it was a place where my kids had their birthday parties in the basement, right? Like I remember one of Riley's parties was like a hockey party. So they, you know, uh, they played hockey with those kind of like sponge, um, you know, sticks with the sponge ends on them. There was and, a wedding there too. Oh, they, they love mini sticks too, but this was like the bigger sticks, like the full size. Yeah, gotcha. So, so you, you can hit, you could hit someone without really hurting them. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to do this. Excuse me, I'm playing. <laughs> hey, I'm coming through here. <laughs> We had a wedding. A wedding was celebrated there. I mean, I'm sure there was more weddings. Yes. Just a personal, very close one to us was. Well, I do. Yep. Good old Chris and Krista. Hello, Chris and Krista. If you're watching, hello. Um, and they're they're, they're happy and well, which is good. So I'm happy to hear that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it the building had a lot of life events happen in it. So I was sad to see it go, but we also didn't want to hurt anyone. The big thing was bef just before that, which was started everything. One of the spires on the church had fallen in a windstorm like and fell to the ground mm -hmm. nobody was on the street at the time yeah and i'm like we're done we're done you know mm -hmm. so then that became okay what do we do we can't fix it because it's in the millions to fix it it was never built right in the first place so what do we do so then we decided well, let's just sell the building and that's what we did mm -hmm. and of course when we sold it we sold it kind of for peanuts but we're basically selling the land um and then one devel developer from toronto bought it they went into receivership and then it transferred and another company has taken it over but as it stands there's still rubble on that site it's still yeah. sitting there sure. and nothing is happening should, we should do a show like a pompeii show <laughs> things like that yes <laughs> With the, the rubble the facade, the facade is still standing we'll get pictures inserted in all this nice the facade is still yeah. standing on james street there and it looks yes. amazing and they're gonna add the condos behind it they just haven't yeah no, which I think is like putting a clown nose on a Mona Lisa. Like, it's just like, yeah. you know, I love the building, but tear it down and do something totally different. You know, it just, it seems, I love the old, like I, I'm in sort of ancient modern kind of guy. Right. But I also think aesthetically, I'm not sure that that idea works, you know, but I'm hoping that they'll use that corner, which had a lot of life events and good things happen. I hope that it becomes a positive thing very soon, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so then when we finished out of the cold, then it was like, okay, well, what do we do next? And, you know, we don't need to spend money on this, but we want to have musicians get together, get to know one another, have places for musicians to play that aren't the Tom Wilsons of the city. And those who, you know, who can play anywhere they want and play in any city they want, but, you know, have audiences. But, you know, what about those musicians who are great in the city that don't have a large audience? And our shows have become that, have been the shows to to showcase this great talent and to give them a, a place to play. So we came up with something called Grace Notes, which, you know, the play on Grace Works and Grace Notes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's become a sort of a, a, a benevolent fund for musicians in a very small scale. And then, you know, we were torn with, well, how do you do that? Because no musician is going to say, well, I haven't got groceries this week. Can you give me groceries? Because yeah. a lot of us are proud and there's, you know, so it's, how do you pick one person over another and how does that process look? So then we got into thinking, what if we funded records? What if we funded, you know, original projects that musicians were making, then that would be a great idea. So then we, we had our first one we did, and this is years ago, we haven't done it since. We've had all of these uh, submissions come in and then we decided to pick three of them of which we were gonna then pick one as, you know, the one who wins it all. And then we said, well, we had a little bit of money. Why don't we just give something to all three? But then the one person who gets picked out of a hat will get, you know, 
the big kahuna kind of thing. Yeah. So, and ironically, uh, <laughs> the person up here uh, did get one of the first awards for his solo album, which I've always was saying to Frank, Frank, you should make your own record sometime. You know, you really, really should. Um, and I'm so glad you did. And it's so great. And I still, that, you know, the, the party at the Casbah was great fun and it was a, it was a good show and sounded great. And, yeah. um, and it was, I think, Jennifer Budd and um, Josh Lamoff who won the other two. Yeah. And, I think, and Jen Budd had done, she got the big one. And that went towards, I think, her video. So the deal was with, with this, it was named after my sister, the Debbie Claus uh, Recording Fund, awesome. is that it could go to any aspect of making your project, whether it was a video, whether it was uh, mastering costs or pressing costs or whatever, you know, mixing time, you're short on mixing, then you can put the thousand dollars towards this or... Um, and my hope originally was to make sure that people would use local services and talents, right? Yeah. And then doesn't Jennifer Budd say, well, I've got somebody in uh, California who I'd like to work with. And I'm like, well, <laughs> okay. It's, it's and, so I mean, hard, yeah. and I don't blame her because my album round was mastered by two guys in California and pressed in California because that's where the best pressing plant at the time was 10 years ago. And they were two guys who I love their remastering work and I just wanted them to do it, you know, so I get it. But anyway, so, so that we started that and we did that and we did the first round, which was great. And then we did more concerts to raise money. And then we sort of put it on hold because we weren't sure where we were going as a church and what was going on. Cause Grace Notes is really connected with Grace Works in terms of being a, a, a nonprofit. So, um, and this year, because of the COVID thing, decided to do something completely different. We have money in the bank, so we want to spend it. So what we were going to do is hire 20 different local musicians to film a set, probably like three songs or 15 minutes of their own music, their own music. And then we're creating a YouTube channel to be able to have a summer festival in August. Cool. So I'm, I hopefully will have the dates. I'm looking at probably the August long weekend to do it just for fun. Awesome. Amazing. And, um, and we've asked Kim and Frank to do it. So hopefully Kim and Frank will be able to, to be a part of that. And so it's still in the planning stages, but we're, we're moving faster. I was going to do it in July, but we've just run out of time. So I thought, let's do it in August. But the hope is you pay the musicians and then the show itself will also raise money for other local needs that are happening around the city. So, and uh, that's what we're trying to find out. You know, it's, um, it's really hard to know what the specific need is. So, uh, we're trying to to get that, and that will be our our focus for. Mm -hmm. you know, and part of me is thinking, some of the food banks I think really do need our help right now at this time. So I'm thinking it will probably be a local food bank that we'll raise money for. So, Grace Notes with the money in the bank instead of putting it towards recordings for this year is going to put their money towards live musicians who have not been able to play, get a, a little gig at least, and then uh, also raise money for someone else to help someone else. So. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the plan. So, yeah, right on. That's fantastic. Because we want, awesome. to, definitely want to support that, and we want to get that out to everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. Because right. I'd like it to be a global thing. And then, you know, I I hear there are rumblings of people trying to put together the Hamilton sort of music award kind of thing. And um, I'm just really surprised that I've not heard about it till yesterday. Because my hope has always been to resurrect it, the festival, and to resurrect sort of uh, a Hamilton based, not musicians from Toronto who are coming into Hamilton, yeah. <laughs> but Hamilton based musicians, right? The trues. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> That's who I lost to for a round. Yeah. Uh, but so great. They're great. You know, like, yeah, like award shows are silly anyway. But anyway, my ego's fine. Really, it's fine. You know, it's great. <laughs> record, great record. I'm okay. Still ten years. I'm not over it. It's okay. Hey, <laughs> that's I don't what I got. About that. Yeah. Later, later yeah. midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, the more, angry, the more angry you get, the elbow comes up higher. Yeah, I'm finding that. I'm liking this, Ed. I'm liking this. Oh, no. You can create another tea. one. <laughs> you can still get angry with tea. You know, you still can. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I just, you know, we've been trying to think creatively as to. I've been feeling that there's need there. And I'm like, how do you help live musicians who are not playing right now? And we just thought that's one, one small way to help. So that's fantastic. That's amazing. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the tough question and we'll get into more other conversation. Um, okay. I'm prepared. I'm so curious about this one. This okay. Tough. Prepare yourself. Three, and you only have three. 
because and, and we've had so many guests give us seven albums and then you could stop at three and i i know this one probably just was pretty tough well i've had this like you've, you've given me this information for quite a few weeks so i've been mulling over this for a while so. <laughs> this is really hard because it's like picking your favorite child and it oh, doesn't yeah. work because there's so many you know like if we if we said three let's say three singles if we said three singles that wouldn't be so hard i say strawberry fields penny lane yeah god only knows and then i would probably say for the third one would probably be my generation that those would be my three but Correct. we're talking about albums. I have some visuals here. Okay. I have before, some we, before we get into the albums, though, I got I got to pause for a second here because you've put a twist on what people have done differently with their records. Like you <laughs> did, you didn't give us seven records. You gave us three singles and now three records. Now you're gonna give us three records. Yeah, exactly. You put, you put a different spin on the whole thing. This is pretty <laughs> awesome. Well, you have to put those singles in here as well now. You know like you exactly. Said. Well, because I think a Strawberry Fields is such a pivotal single, right, of all time. Like, I mean, Penny Lane is like the perfect, the perfect single. And then God Only Knows, the Beach Boys. I mean, yeah. you know, I just, I cry every time I hear it. When I hear the sleigh bells, I'm done, you know? Beautiful song, so, yeah. so having prefaced that, there are records like Pet Sounds that are not in these top three, but it's really hard. So I tried to pick three that were representative of who I am. So the first one's no surprise. There, yes. Yes. I love that record so much. There is so much still here in this record to digest. And although this is my mono original mono pressing, which I love, oh. I still love the stereo mix. I know all the big beats <laughs> and say, you know, Take and it. it sounds great. So of course, you know, give, gotta... give me that record. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to oh. get it. <laughs> so there's That's a lovely inner, inner sleeve. There's just, this changed everything for us, right? As musicians and, it, and just the way it approached artwork and, you yeah. know, there was so much care taken into doing this. Sorry for all the reflections, but you can oh, see So I, I had to say Pepper, being such a Beatles fan, had to be number one. Love yeah. it. Now, the next album, I couldn't show you my original UK pressing on this because it's we're a G-rated audience. So Okay. <laughs> well you do you do know that you dropped the you dropped the F bomb about eight. I did <laughs> drop the F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys edit that out or no? Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. see. we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explicit language from a worship yeah, pastor. That's right. <laughs> this would be my second, which is the new box version of Electric. Oh, Blue yes. Blue. Wow. Yes, so and you know, we've Blue. had another guest that had that same record uh, as their pick, too. That's yeah. Electric Ladyland. I was, it was grade eight, and I'm, I don't know why I bought it. For some, like, I mean, I liked, I knew who Hendrix was, and I think I had, I had purchased the essential Jimi Hendrix, or I think it was that, Back in the late 70s, they had these, like, it was a blue compilation and kind of like a burgundy compilation. Yeah. So I got the single blue compilation, which had a version of them doing Gloria by, like, them, Van, Van Morrison, right? Yeah. So great. Anyway, it was kind of like a greatest hits. Yeah. And then I think, and then I got Jimi Hendrix and Otis Redding at Monterey Pop Festival. It was like, one side was Otis, one side was Jim, <laughs> which wow. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I bought this in like I was in grade eight, 1978, and I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, I put the headphones on, I'm like, yeah. this is what it means to take drugs. Like it was just like, <laughs> oh, like it was just everything. Like it was, it was th three dimensional. It was, and to this day, I still, and actually this box has the 5.1, which I still need oh, to wow. listen to. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm like, when did you buy this box set? This, this isn't one, the original one that you bought. No, this is this is a recent uh, box set that came out. I think it was like two years ago, 2018. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, and this was the what Jimmy wanted is the original cover. He didn't want the naked ladies on the front. He wanted this. Right. And eventually, what happened was this was the cover that eventually got picked. Was that one? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So that was the original front cover. But right. this to me, this was a shot that Linda Eastman took, who then became Linda McCartney. Oh, yeah. And it's a shot of the boys in uh, um, Central Park in New York City. Yeah. So they're at one of the little, yeah. So that would be number two just for it. It is in terms of guitar playing. I mean, he Everything. really did inspire. I mean, I don't think I play like Hendrix at all, but certainly for sure that that approach to sound, that approach to playing, he was a huge influence. Huge. And, and, and the willingness to take a risk when you're playing. Yes. And he, he, he and never stopped. You can hit the bad note because you're going for that. You're going for something and it may not work. 
Exactly. If you don't do that. It's not going to ever happen. Exactly. If you play it safe and stick with the mode and stick with where you're supposed to be, it's like, hmm, you know, and there are times that, yeah. And bends. Oh my gosh. No one could bend like Jimmy because those, yeah. his fingers were so enormous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so this is definitely, and you know how hard it is to pick three albums? This is yeah. really hard. You do. <laughs> I haven't picked mine. Good job here. Those are great <laughs> ones. So the next one is a surprise one because I don't think you would ever see me picking this one, but uh, let me throw it out. <laughs> this Suf John Stevens, Carrie and Lowell. I don't know this. What's this here you got? Well, Suf John Stevens is this like incredible artist composer who just if you, if you ever have someone die in your life, this is the record to listen to. This was the one that he wrote for his mom, and I believe that's his stepdad. Um, he, um, what's the, Come On, Feel the Illinois is one of my favorites of his. Come that's on. a great What What'd you say? It's Come On, Feel the Illinois. That's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Actually, I can probably find, let me find the cover. Let's let's do this. Let me find Yeah, it. sure. So okay. when do you think that that, when was that record released? Is that... Uh... Um, this is fairly recent. This one was actually done in 2015. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll come is, back this, is this a newer artist or is this something like just a guy that has like 25 records out? He's, he's been going for quite a while. So early 2000s, were, well, yeah, late 90s, early 2000s was kind of when he started. This is the okay. one, come on, feel the Illinois. Uh, just <laughs> like, you know. So what Which, kind of music would you describe it as? you think if you had to it, put a title on it i hate labels like it's oh i know yeah. it's i kind of see this as being very like minimalist music sort of like philip glass steve reich kind of but pop music okay very okay. melodic uh intense little things but like beautiful melodies like when i think of some of those melodies of radiohead i kind of think some of that is in here, the approach to melody, but it doesn't sound like Radiohead. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but the thing about Carrie and, and Lowell is that it's it's one of those albums that you listen to and you kind of, your heart aches. Like this is one of those heartache albums. And it's like, he recorded on his iPhone, he all these different sources. And I'm like, seriously? Wow. Because it just proves to me that the technology doesn't matter when you've got something that sounds amazing or that is evocative mm -hmm. and it works. So it, it, I don't know, a lot of people don't love this, but, but for me, it just, it's one of those, like if I'm in kind of one of those down, dark moods and I just want to like, you know, it's kind of like the Beck album that came out a few years ago that won the Grammy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really love that record too, in terms of how it sounds, you know, like that one's a very lush sounding record and I can't even think of the name of it now, but you know, that I love that record, but this one, it just, yeah, it kind of was a sleeper album, but his approach to melody, his approach to rhythm, it's very much like some of the, you know, 20th century composers that, you know, were creating music, but it's, it, it's a pop album. I mean, here's the song titles, Death with Dignity, Should Have Known Better, All of Me Wants All of You, Drawn to the Blood, Fourth <laughs> of July. Like there's mixtures of spirituality, but also human stuff. And yeah, so it's... Um, yeah, and it's all mostly acoustic instruments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the pairings that he gets, he gets these weird sort of open tunings and gets different banjoy things, and, cool. and for some reason it works. Like, but it's 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 yeah. So I I couldn't decide because I mean I wanted to put down Quadrophenia because that's a huge. Here record. it goes. Here we go, Frank. The next the seven records. <laughs> you know, Bring you it know, in, baby. <laughs> that sounds. You know, like that's I mean, like there's so many, and and so. Funny. <laughs> but I, but I promised I wouldn't go more than that. So, so I'm just yeah. The best part of this is for it's and we say this almost every every episode is that it either reintroduces the stuff that I've forgotten about or completely brings us to some music I've never heard. Yeah. And sometimes well, and it could be music from 45, 50 years ago that I just I've never heard that music. Yeah. Yeah. People will bring that. And I thought with this is probably one that you guys haven't heard or that yeah. you know would not be so well known and it just it's really. I've shared with friends and some are like, eh, they didn't get it. And just, right. you know, you know, yeah. whereas I remember when I first heard Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco, the first time I listened to it, I went, what? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. And then as I listened to it, I'm like, and then I heard about the story of how that album came to be and how um, they were dropped from the label and then re-signed, blah, blah. You can check out that story. There's a whole documentary on it, which is great. Yeah. But 
then it's become one of my favorite records too. I mean, it's, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> keep adding, I think you keep adding records. Keep the going. Record you added, you you added, you added we got all seven, day. Seven albums and three singles. <laughs> I have a lot of records, so I mean, even the one that's sitting behind me under the what XTC, I just put together, I'm looking at that. I'm you know, like, what drums is that and like? wires, drums and wires by XTC that's and English settlement, at. English settlement. You know, like don't get me started because we can. <laughs> well, you know, I don't like this. I'm that's, fun. that's a signed picture of John Entwistle. His oh. solo album Whistle Rhymes would have also gone on that list. Peter Frampton plays on that solo album, and it's what? so great. It's what? so great. It's so I saw, so just a couple summers ago, I saw Peter Frampton and um, uh, Steve Miller at Lewiston Art Park, like where, you know, oh. the, the tickets are 20 bucks or whatever US, right? It's really cheap. You got to kind of, it's like a, it's a general admission thing. So you got to get there at 4 p.m. Yeah. Um, I forgot what a great, a songwriter that Frampton was. Yes. And what a phenomenal guitar, that he was, a, he was a, just a guitar player first. Yeah. In a band before he was even a lead band. He yeah. was Humble Pie. He and the joy of ex he just was extending solos, having fun. No, no Kemplers were hurt in the performance. It was all Marshall stacks, yes. <laughs> real B threes, you know, or high watts. High watts. There you go. Well, was, yeah, there you go. Nice, nicely done. <laughs> Christopher plays that. really quiet. If you want to know that, Ed. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> well, it's only a fifteen watt Vox. It's not a thirty. It's a fifteen. Oh. Oh, that's all the difference there, right there. It is. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, are you watching anything these days? I don't know um, if you're a TV guy or not, or a movie guy. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge TV guy, um, just because, you know, usually, it's, the funny thing is, though, I'm not a TV guy, but I've been watching on YouTube a lot of the late night guys mm -hmm. on their, like, reposting of things. And I've been loving watching Seth Meyers. Oh yeah, like just you know his closer looks and different things. So my wife and I have been watching tons of that. We've been doing tons of movies too through Netflix, which has been really good, and watching some old favorites. And it was so nice. Even my daughter Emma said, "Hey, why don't we put help on?" And you have to understand with my family, like we have one sort of viewing area in our back room to watch stuff that has like the five point one and and whatnot. You know, a modest. It's nothing huge, but it's yeah. you know it's still five point. At home, down here is is right now is only two channels. So. Uh, but I'm working on trying to make it surround with those other speakers, but oh, we're yeah. not there. Yet, so, cool. um, and um, I never get to watch anything that I want. So if it's like, you know, it has to either be my birthday or Father's Day where they'll let me watch what I want. <laughs> so for her to say, can we watch help? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that would be heart great. Flutter. A little heart flutter there, you know. Like, it was. I'm like, I did something right <laughs> as a parent. <laughs> so, aidez moi, aidez moi. <laughs> yeah. That's um, great. And and watching, uh, darn it, um, the film that won the Academy Award this year. Is it Perfection? No, no, darn it. It's the one that won the Academy Award. We finally watched it. I can't think of the name. Can you that. give me an idea of uh, what, like the story, the premise, or anything, or who's in it? The, the premise is it's, it's about, um, I believe it's an Asian family who mm. is, um, they end up working for this rich family. And they, um, they do it by very creative means in terms of getting their jobs. And they don't tell the employers that they're all related. Oh, and, and there's a big twist that happens. Why can't I think of the name of it? It's a South Korean movie, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was like, so I don't want to say too much about it if you've never seen it, but it was like, it was kind of disturbing, I have to say. But it was like, I can see why it won because it, there was nothing, I don't think there's ever been a film like this before in the mainstream. So I, where is it? Where is it being? Uh, like, is it on Netflix or? It is. Yes, it is on Netflix. Yeah. Is it called American Factory? No, nope, no. Nope. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't on Netflix. We actually rented it on Apple. Um, now I'm gonna have to search if you guys don't mind because it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's well, gonna drive me crazy. It's bold, bold face. No, nope, no. Nope. Parasite. 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 It's called Parasite. Ooh, that sounds like it's. Uh... That sounds like it's nasty. <laughs> it is. It's, it's kind of, you know, the films you want to watch during the day, that's kind of one of my films I like to watch during the day. So okay. um, it's but does, very does well this mean, Does this mean like like midnight to 2 a.m.? Like I'm... <laughs> oh, I just know like you know, daylight meaning, yeah, when there's real daylight because you don't want to, you don't want to watch it in the evening because it's just like, you know, you know 
You're like this going to bed. You know? Is it a scary, <laughs> a scary one? Like, <laughs> well, see, I'm not a big horror movie fan, so horror is not my thing anyway. So it's not like it's like, <gasps> but it's like, oh, it's one of those disturbing, disturbing. Like, you know, like understandable and realistic, but disturbing in some ways, right? Is and it, I'm all about redemption at the end, and yeah. there's a little bit, but there's still not stuff enough. there. Not <laughs> For me, not enough. Yeah. Would, you I like, yeah. Would it be like David Lynch-like, you know, like... Um, and it's, you know, like, say, Blue Velvet or something like that is, you know, it's very disturbing film. Yes. Maybe not as as slick and as cool. Does that yeah. make any sense? Like, not because yeah. Lynch films tend to have that aura about them, right? This is very, um, it almost feels more like a documentary in some ways. And the way that it was shot was, I mean, it was shot, I think, mostly with, like, some, like, I think, like, there was some handheld stuff going on, but then, like, it was shot really well. Yeah. yeah, but it just you can tell it just feels a bit r more natural than a Lynch film would would feel. Would like. you recommend it though? Would I would. I would. Yeah. It was a very well made film. I yeah. was really impressed. And you know, like we, I'm just looking here. Like we watched Joker as well, and that was really disturbing. Oh um, yeah, that totally yeah. was. Yeah. I caught that on a flight. Uh, that was I landed kind of zombie eyed. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I just watched a fantastic movie the other day that it, it came up in the feed in, in Netflix like almost like it was a new movie. You know what I mean? Like it just showed up at the top featured. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the actor's name. I, I, terrible. But um, it was called Into the Wild. And it's based on a true story about this this kid that goes like in the States, goes through all like the university like his parents wanted him to was on track with the best grades and all scholarships to Harvard for law and did everything perfect picture, perfect family. And then just said, chopped up all of his ID and birth certificates and everything. And then took off to Alaska for two years, gave like took all of his money, gave it to um, a charity. He said, feed somebody with it. And wow. he ended up dying in Alaska uh, by st from starvation and it's a true story and a couple hunters found him um, and he had like film documentary of his two years uh, so there was footage and it was uh, it was filmed in 2007 so it's, it's not a new movie and it was absolutely fantastic like awesome captivating awesome. the whole time and at the end I didn't read that it was based on true events it's not till the end when they show like the real pictures and real footage, you know, they yep. do that sometimes mm -hmm. that I found out that it was based on true events and I recommend it to anybody into awesome. the wild. It's called into the wild. I just wrote it down. That's awesome. Yeah. I have to say though, we just, my wife and I just, we like, we love buying films or renting films and rewatching them. So one we watched the other night, which I haven't seen in so long, but it was like, it was so great to watch was the secret life of Walter Mitty. Oh, Wow. And, and that's one um, that just, it's, it's a great film. It's well shot. Um, and I, I, it's one of those things I just, I, I have to say, if I could recommend any film to watch, I would say that would be a film that I would recommend for sure. So, the and Secret I'm to, Walter Mitty. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Yeah. Mitty. Yeah. Yeah. And um, cool. I'm trying to think of who, um, Okay, so who was the actor who, because he actually, um, my gosh, um, Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller directed the film. Oh, yeah. And, um, He's a great director, man. He is. He, he really is. is. And just his attention to detail and the cinematography, the way the film is shot, it's about, a, about Life magazine that's finally, they're going to stop being a print magazine, but go to an online thing, which never really happened, but that's the premise. And so the whole film has been shot with that perspective of the life sort of uh, aesthetic in terms of the photographs and, and the way the film was, the cinematography, the way it was shot, you can see a lot of that. And Walter is a very creative guy and he kind of, he'll go into these places where he will, you know, sort of daydream these events happening and so the film shows all of this and it's it's about his really his story and his 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 you know coming to consciousness i would probably say yeah but um it, just for watching how it's shot and i like the characters in the film definitely yeah secret life of walter Mitty. it's, it's uh, an old film well, older film but definitely we're seeing and yeah if you like cinematography and how things are shot and i just i like the aesthetic so yeah. amazing yeah my god
You know, another great uh, director that I didn't know that was, uh, is, um, uh, who directed, the, the Richard Cunningham, Howard. Ron Howard, Ron Howard. Ron Howard, his daughter, his daughter is an absolutely fantastic director. And she's one really? of the directors that directs The Mandalorian. No because way. If you go on Disney Plus and you check out the extras, there's a thing, thing on there that, that sits down because The Mandalorian was directed by multi-directors. Right. And one of the directors was the guy that does what we do in the shadows and Ron Howard's daughter. And I didn't yeah. even know that this was Ron Howard's daughter. It's the, the, the girl that plays, uh, she's the main character in the new Jurassic Park movies, like the Jurassic World, the oh. redhead girl. That's Ron oh. Howard's daughter. Redhead. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I told her, right? But like, I'm getting good, I'm getting good, my hair standing up on end because it was, yeah. when I realized the connection, I mean, I grew up with, with Ron Howard being Richard yep. Cunningham and then all the, you know, yep. Apollo 13s and all the great movies he directed. Yeah. This makes sense, like Ben Stiller, look at his dad, right? It makes exactly. sense that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Nope. And he did a great Beatles documentary as well, Ron Howard, too. Just throwing that in there. Yes, that's right. Yeah, very cool. Which one was that one? What's that called? Uh, it was based on the sort of 1964 Beatles sort of tour. So it was like from, I think, 64 to 66 kind of thing. And I can't think of the name of it. It's right. like a blue cover. I want to say eight days a week, but I don't think that's it. But the one, oh, you, you know what? You might be right about that name, though, actually, because that sounds familiar. I'm just gonna... what, was, what was the movie where they're mostly in Hamburg? What's that one called? That um, no. It, is it the one where, like, it's, is it actors who are portraying the Beatles or? Yeah, it was actors who are portraying the Beatles. There's one that's about Stu Sutcliffe that I love. Um, Maybe that's the one. Backbeat. Backbeat. There's I think Backbeat. that was Backbeat. Yeah, that's what I'm I thinking. love that's that. not the Ron Howard one, though. No. That no. Beatles movie is Eight Days a Week. You're eight right. Days a Week. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, the, and uh, but speaking of Beatle movies, September, Peter Jackman, right? Is that the, I got it right? Yeah, Peter Jackson. Who did Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh, he's Jackson, finally yeah. doing... Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson. Jackson. Right, Jackman, Jackson. Sorry, Jack Jackman. Jackman, yeah. Peter Hugh Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Exactly. Because we just... Jackman. <laughs> Jackman and... Yeah, Peter Jackson, who yeah. directed Lord of the Rings, is doing a film on the Beatles' Let It Be sessions. Oh, wow. it's, it's called Get Back. It's coming out in September. I'm like, I cannot leave the planet until I see this film. So I will be really <laughs> kicked. If God takes me home before yeah. the film comes out, I'm like with COVID, I'm like, when am I going to see it? <laughs> Christopher, we won't let that happen. No, exactly. We will we not. Will the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait because it's like. Stand back, Lord. Yeah. Peter Jackson. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No, I've got too much to do. He's got me busy. So he's got you busy. You're doing good. You're doing such good. Th you're, I, I was, uh, I always, when, I have trouble with organized religion a lot of times because and you have every oh, right. To, yeah, no, no, just every right. This, to, uh, no, no, no. There'd be a lot of beep going on here. I don't know. No, no, no. It's coming from my voice. <laughs> it's it's the it's the it's the actions, not the words. That's yeah. what I've always loved about Christopher. Is he's always put his Christianity into actions, yeah. as opposed to being the Pharisee saying, "Look, everything I've given, here you go." And you know that oh, parable. That parable is the one. You're the, the lady yeah. with the last gold coin. So, because it always, you know, when, when you've, you, when we've done the uh, Corn Christmases, raising money for whether you're performing or emceeing, it's never, you know, it's just a matter of question of family commitment time, but if you can commit to it, you will. Yeah. And well, and there's so much fun. Those were great shows, I have to say. And again, it, when you're like-minded about things, you stick around people who are like-minded and you guys mm -hmm. see the need and want it to change and, and that's why I love you guys. I mean, well, there's lots of other reasons too, but you know, um, I think that's why we get along so well is because we have that, that sense of seeing the stuff that sometimes what other people don't see, you know, awesome. and then, then you're responsible, you're responsible to do something. So, and I, the stuff I'm not doing that I could be doing. Right. And, and we're all like that, but sure. it's just, I think awareness. Right. And I think COVID has done that. We're going to come right back okay. for a final installment. Not sure what you're doing doing here, but I I'm not sure. I was just trying to get your attention. Put my hand uh, up. Uh, can I speak, please? <laughs> yeah, protection, protection. You know, really, but you can't do this. It's got to be no, that because you're going to lose your drink, right? So it's very. You can do this when it's like midday, but you can't do that at the start. It's got to be like <laughs> off, full, right? full. Got to be full. At nighttime, it's like this with the scotch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the elbow droops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, droops. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, Deep intermission. 
problem here friends don't let friends snap on one and three <laughs> friends don't let friends snap <laughs> period <laughs> after all that snap country music yeah that's how you can tell a democrat from a republican in the united states right so. <laughs> one and three. you got it hey christopher i was gonna say um well you frank were quickly talking about how you know frank you were saying about religion and how that can get such a bad rap and then you know, I remember being younger, like I grew up going to church with my family and going to Sunday school and all that. And then I got to a certain age where it kind of, I wouldn't say fall apart, but it just kind of like became less of a, a weekly priority. That's another story. But anyway, my uncle uh, is a minister and he has a church in New Glasgow. Um, and he's also a country gospel and he's got six or seven records out. And he used to tour his records to all the prisons in Canada nice. and he would preach you know to the to the inmates and play music and then he had the church back in New Glasgow and so on and so forth awesome. but I awesome. just remember hanging out with him at, as an early teenager and remember looking at my uncle being the guy who had a Harley who had records who you know tattoos you know he had a story he had a life prior to that and yep. just to sit with him and talk would be so inspiring for me because it it made me look at religion in a different way or, or not necessarily religion, just on how you should act as a human being. And exactly what you were saying, Frank, is just, it's, it's more the, the practicings, right? The just being a good person and trying to be better tomorrow yeah. than you were today, yeah. you know? And I, I, yeah, it was just cool. That, so I thank you for being such a cool dude. And, uh, you know, because we do need to spread that that good word and, and the love around the world. And uh, it, we need it more today than ever. And it's people like you and my uncle, they're the ones to do it. You're the ones to do it, to inspire us to do it, too. So thank you, my thank friend. You. I'm a hippie at heart, you know. And, you know, when you say God is love, that's, to me, that's it, you know, and the essence of who God is. And I think people have missed the point for years and years and years. And it's like... You know, if it's not of love, it's not of God. And, if it, and you sense it, you know. And, and so, yeah, I still believe that love can change the world. And especially now, you know, and I see people rising up and, and saying this matters. Uh, and I think that's so crucial that we need to keep doing that. You know, we need to keep saying we fight for the people who are oppressed. We fight for the people who are not seen as equals. We fight for the widow, the orphan, those who are heartbroken. You know, that's who we fight for. And that's... You know, that's, God calls us to do that. So, you know. It's, what, a, what, a, what a silly life to live if it was all just about you. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean like, or just about me or just about, I, I think when I had kids that really exploded the world for me. It was like, yes, it's not about me. <laughs> it's about, you know, I can give love, you know, as opposed to want, needing it. Taking it all the time. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think for me, that was part of it. When I became a dad was I kind of saw you know, how, how does God view us, you know, and he, God must view us like we view our kids. So it gave me a whole different perspective on, you know, mercy and grace and all those things. So yeah, yeah being a parent's the best. It I mean, is. It's, it's, it's been the thing that has defined my life and has really been the best thing in my life. And, yeah. um, you know, it's still, it's still my number one job, right? Is, is I want to be yep. there for my kids as long as I'm here, you know, and, um, yeah. The best thing about having kids, I at least I think you're start noticing this, Ed, because you're, you're you know Maple's ten or eleven now, right? So she's yeah. not not in a teenager yet. Yeah. Uh, but after <laughs> you've had for as one one when one of them hits twenty, <laughs> she's not a teenager. Yet. When one of them hits twenty, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got your back, Ed. <laughs> 
when they hit 20, you don't feel like you've aged 20 years. You've just watched your kids grow 20 years. Exactly. You don't, you don't feel, exactly. other than falling down off ladders and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the aches and pains. And the aches and pains that, you know, but you, you don't notice them until after the kids. And I've had both my kids have, you know, flown the coop. So we're, I'm, I'm an empty nester. And now I start feeling all the pains and aches and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then you see them as adults and you have conversations. Yeah. Even though as you become teenagers, it becomes more adult conversation. Yeah. So it's a great way to uh, get going forward. Um, well, I, I remember you telling the story, Frank, about taking your, or showing your kids Louis C.K. for the first time. And I'm just like, like just those life moments of like, it's, you know, it's the next stage. It's the next yeah. step in communication yeah. or just understanding, you know, right? Exactly. Everything, everything from when we traveled through Europe, just when they would see true, like, I mean, there's homelessness everywhere in Hamilton, Cleveland, but when they would see it, some places, you know, in Venice, it was just so in your face on the, by the train stations. Yeah. And, and almost not quite like I had gone through a bit of Egypt and Morocco where you saw even like leprosy and stuff like that. It wasn't quite there, but it was close to that where you saw a lot of skin lesions that, you know, we will take them and put them into a hospital here and get that fixed. Yeah. And they're still out on the streets. They're just overwhelmed because they're coming from all over the world or whatever the, whatever the story is, how they got there, yeah. which is in itself is a fascinating thing. And, yeah. and that was a huge learning curve for them and, and brings them because we can't protect them from the world forever because the world's going to, otherwise they're not prepared for the world either. Right. It's, it's not, you know, it's not all beautiful at all times. We want to get it to that, but huh, let's go to lighter topics. Sure. <laughs> life is good. I like got a question for you, Christopher. Okay, sure. In your, um, in your bio, it mentions about drinking tea off the coast of France. Yeah. What's, um, uh, do you, do you, do you, do you spend a lot of time in France or just, no, uh, no, oh, no, I love no. it. Yeah. It's one of those, like, if I could, you yeah. know, I would love to, you know, South of France, just sit and sip tea and just, you know, hang out on, you know, in, in the cafes and that, that kind of, you know, style council, Paris match in the background, you know, style yeah. council, all about, you know, <laughs> yeah. that kind of, that whole vibe, that to me would be kind of the dream. So if you can't find me, I'm definitely in a record store or I'd like to be there. Mind right. you. And and a beach in Hawaii. Those are the you know the oh, three. Have you been there? I have. I went there on my honeymoon oh. back in 1990. Wow. And honestly, Ooh. we came off the plane. We walk off the plane, and we didn't realize what a great thing we had decided to do. And it was good we did it then because there's no way we could do it now. Um, <laughs> got off the plane, and the air was so different. It was just. It was like oh, you could breathe again. And in, back in 1990, the air wasn't so bad. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I love. I have to say, COVID-19, thank you for bringing the air back, the fresh air. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just so mm -hmm. beautiful. But, you know, it was, back then was amazing. So it, it really, and there were couples that were coming for their, like, 30th, 40th, 50th wedding anniversaries that said, you've got nowhere to go but down <laughs> in terms of <laughs> if you're going to go on your anniversaries. And since then, I think we've been on, like, one trip for anniversary but we haven't been to anywhere as big as that but yeah. before i die i'd like to go back because it's what what month were you married in month of april so, so we you just, just celebrated 30 we years did. we celebrated 30 years exactly congratulations yeah. oh, congratulations you. brother that's thank awesome thank you you know communication's the key you know <laughs> i mean i haven't been the easiest person to live with and of course you know being a musician there's certain things that are can tax a relationship and certain personality traits of mine can also tax a certain aspect of our relationship. But, you know, at the end of the day, we just, we want to stay together and be together. And, you know, there's, yeah. It's, I think, uh, I think you, I, I've had, and it's Kim and I are on heading for 26 years this year and we've, we've had this and we've talked about this one, Ed, in the bus where a lot of people say, Oh, you guys are so lucky to be together still. I said, luck had nothing to do with nothing it. to do with it. Hard work. Yeah, yeah. It. exactly. It's and a decision. Not, it's not luck. No. It's, you have well, to be love, willing to do the work, you know? Yeah. I mean, but it, it, if you define love as that feeling and that, ooh, isn't that fun? And, you know, the spark that we all love and some of us get addicted to, love is really this sense of saying, I'm going to put that person before myself. Yeah. As difficult as it can be, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. And, yeah, and that's how relationships last is but, you make a decision to go. What was like um, Olivia Harrison said about in one of the documentaries about George? She said, well, you know, the, the way that you don't, you know, um, that you stay together is you don't get a divorce. 
Yeah, there you <laughs> like, go. It's like you stay together. You make the decision and you you work at it. So, but you know, anything it's worth, worth, it's worth anything it. worth having takes work. It does, and it's yeah. worth it. It's worth yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I've been blessed for 30 years to have Rose Francis as my partner. And, you know, at the end of the day, she's always got my back. At the end of the day, you know, she'll make me a cup of tea when I'm having a rough time or, you know, she's, she understands. And she's, she's known me in my best of times and worst of times. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and your partner, you know, why would I give that up? Yeah, exactly. Why would anyone give that up? For like, what? it just doesn't make sense for, for a momentary feeling or a, right. ooh, it's like, no. And, and she's such a beautiful person too. She and her is. Name is Rose? Rose, Rose Francis. Rose Francis. Here's and the Rose. Yeah. Cheers. Francis. Cheers for Rose well, Francis. I guess I can do that because I'm not going to hurt her. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know this turned into hurting somebody. That's a whole other level. Well, it's protection, really. It's protection. But, but didn't, your, <laughs> but didn't your, your entire relationship started with a teenage head concert, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, you know the story. Yeah, it was grade 11. In Grimsby Secondary School, so Grimsby High, G GSS, and uh, I was with my friend John McDermott, and we were sitting on the bleachers, and um, you know there was a band that opened up, which ironically her brother was in. He was the drummer in a punk band called Silent Minority. He's a great drummer too. I just I wish he would play more, which he doesn't. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and talking to John, and we're hanging out, and I look down from the bleachers to the the door that heads off to the hallway of you know from the gymnasium. And I look down and there's this most beautiful girl that I've never seen before. And I'm like, John, do you know who that is? And he said, well, that's Rose Francis St. Martin. And I'm like, I'm going to marry her. <laughs> like, who says that? Grade 11, who says that? But it was this overwhelming feeling of like, I'm home. Like, I just, I just kind of knew it when I saw her. And then, of course... I stalked her for a little bit, which was maybe not so good. <laughs> it was the 80s. It's okay. It was the 80s. Stalking was kind of normal. I, I, I was a nice stalker, but it was still. <laughs> and then it just, it worked out that she, I was getting the courage to ask her to dance at one of the dances that was coming up. And didn't she go on a three month exchange to France? <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm like, so then I'm like, okay, I know that her friend Jennifer has her address. So I'm going to write her a letter. So I get bold enough to write her a letter saying, hi, you don't know me, but um, you know. <laughs> so she tells me later, she goes, you know, when this, you know, when we got to know each other, she's like, okay, I get this letter from some guy I don't even know. And he says that like he and his, his buddy are like Lennon and McCartney. And it was like, I was just throwing it on. Right. Like I was just, I, I had such an ego as a kid. It's totally changed. Thank God. Thank God that that changed. <laughs> Um, and it was just, you know, she was like, who is this guy? She didn't know who I was. We never had classes together, never had classes together. And then of course it was like, you don't know someone, how do you get to know them? But you want to say hello to them. So I would try to in the hallway, but she was like, you know, it took in grade 13, we did Godspell was the musical that year that we did. I was in the band. She ended up in the cast. She heard my guitar playing and fell in love. Oh, <laughs> so that was kind of, you know, how it happened. But, you know, and we had our first date and the first date did not go well. Um, funny story, had a 74 gold duster and the passenger door um, it wouldn't open from the inside. You had to go outside to open it. So I knew that, but I didn't tell Rose Francis because I just thought, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed you know, driving the 74 duster, but whatever. So when I'm driving her home, I get out and I'm going to get the door. And she said, I can get my own door, thanks. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, okay. And then it just, it went downhill from there. Like the whole, it was just it, the worst first date ever. And I said, I'm done. I'm done. And this had been from grade 11 to grade 13. So like three years of like pining away for this girl. I'm like, I'm done, done. And then after one of the performances of Godspell, she ran, gave me a hug. And she, and she gave me a kiss and she was like, I'm sorry that I misjudged you. I want to get to know you better. Oh, look at that. Awesome. And that was how that started. And then. Oh, yeah. Great story, man. Yeah. Yeah. It is a cool story. And it's one it's that, you know, story. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was worst first date ever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we watched at my house, the world according to Garp. Worst movie oh, to watch on the first date. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. Not, <laughs> it's a bad film. It's not even a good film. Like for. What yeah, could, you know, like it could have been exactly, and yeah, yeah it was so much better, you know, like yeah, yeah, that's a classic. The book is way better than the movie. 
Yes. <laughs> that's what despite I, the cast. You yes. Know, that's a Robin Williams film. And I know, just, I know. Who was so brilliant. But, uh, yeah. so. That's great. Uh, coming up there, Christopher, I know you've got a few things. You just, you just did, uh, you just recreated Rubber Soul. Uh, yes, that was in July, or actually, yes, July 17th, last week. Last week. it was last, last week. week. Yeah, and and um, the hope is, uh, I had done in May, it just worked out, you know, I've, I've been restless and wanting to play, and, you know, and when you're missing your usual gigs, it's like, you know, the income is an issue, and I just thought, well, I'd like to somehow do that, so, uh, to make up for what I've lost, and so, um, with all the equipment we've been using for the church, I've been also able to use some of it to be able to do these live streams. Mm -hmm. So the first was a Tuesday night to replace my gig at the cactus, the thirsty yeah. cactus that I play every Tuesday night. And um, then I thought, well, this is actually going kind of fun and people have been tipping, which has been nice. Um, so why don't I just do a Friday night, all Beatles. And then that's really become a very popular night. So it's like, okay, great. Friday night at nine o'clock. And um, when we, got to May, I'm like, wait a sec, the Let It Be album was done on May the 8th, because of course I'm a geek, right, a Beatles geek, so I'm like, well, I'll just play the Let It Be album, so I did that, I tried to recreate the Let It Be album from start to finish, and played all the songs, and um, I wish I could do it again, because there was some stuff, was like, oh, that was bad, you know, so, so I thought, well, why don't I do a show where I can actually sell tickets in advance, and be able to, you know, it would be on YouTube, not on Facebook, because that's just the way to do it, and, um, and then people, and I've got people who have been like standard tippers every week who've been tipping like, you know, nice. so certain people who have a certain amount that they've tipped, they get into the show for free. And then for those who haven't, you know, you know, who want to go see the show, it's going to be a minimum amount to get in and they get a code, which allows them to get into this secret room on YouTube. And that's how I'm going to do it. So, um, so, uh, recreating revolver is going to happen, I believe August the 7th. I think that's the date. And, um, and that's on a Friday night. So, and because uh, I, it's another record that I love so much. Eight, nine, ten. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've lost track. No. I think you're my I think foot. You're the, rec the record holder now, though. <laughs> pretty soon my foot's going to come into the. Uh, my toes. <laughs> <laughs> we need more digits. We need <laughs> more digits. This is um, one. <laughs> and um, so yeah, and I thought Revolver would be fun to do, and. Um, so use my looper with it and, you know, most of the stuff I do not like to prepare in advance, but there'll be a couple loops that I'll prepare in advance just to, to make things work. Okay. But, um, mm -hmm. and then, um, usually what happens for the live shows I've been doing, like, here's my sort of plan set list and then I'll invite people to make requests and go from there. And so, um, it's, it's been interesting to try that. And it, what's been for me as a musician, it's been really good at, um, I using a, I'm using a software called Ecamm live for the Mac. And Ecamm has been great in terms of being able to, you know, you can use different cameras. You can even plug in a Canon camera directly in via USB without a, a capture card. Like, it's so great. Yeah. Um, so what did you call that, Christopher? It's called Ecamm Live, E-C-A-M-M -M Live. And um, that was the software we decided to use for the church. And it's it's been wonderful. So I can use multiple cameras and you can control it from your keyboard. Yeah. And so I'll use my iPhone as a camera, I'll use this camera, this little Logitech, the 922, and then my my digital SLR plugs directly in because it's a Canon. So, yeah, okay. um, and it's been, you know- how, so do you, how are you plugging it in via USB, you said? Yep, yep, so just directly into the computer via USB with no capture card. Usually you have to use some sort of capture card, right, to do that, yep. but for the Canon cameras, I don't know how they did it, Ecamm, but they've done it so that you can bypass that. Cool. So, yeah. And this so, will be live? This will be live, yeah. So you, so YouTube does a live uh, version as well. They Three can, yes. My our, my friends Adam and Sarah, who have a, a streaming show. Adam also plays at the Cactus. Adam Os mm -hmm. Osterster, um, he um, has been doing it all on YouTube Live. That yep. was their. They decided to go that route. And the nice thing about YouTube is that um, I think it goes in 1080p, whereas Facebook Live is only going to 720. So it looks a right. little nicer. But, yeah. yeah. You know, and you've worked your audio out really well too. Like you're, I, you know, me and how much I love sound. I, you know, I didn't realize for the first couple, they were all coming in this stream mono that sounded like a really low bit rate MP3. And I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. you know, I'm like, no, we're not having that. So I found a setting where it separates the channels to left and right. I'm using a, a zoom board, 
yeah. one of those uh, 20 channel zoom boards yeah. and of course using my apollo twin little interface from universal audio for the mac which i love it's a desktop thing it's just so it's great I'm, i yeah. wish i had the money to go and get the big apollos and the whole you know but for now <laughs> it's great it's They're great amazing. and so i've been doing that and running the audio analog from the board to there because the zoom has its own interface but i i I'm having troubles to figure out how to do that. And I, I have to talk to Amy because Amy King has, you know, uses it a lot and uh, she's had good success with it. But so I'm just running an analog into the interface and then that to the computer. Yeah. And that allows me so I can then hear it in my monitor speakers here. And I'll also put headphones on because I find the headphones help me to just hear where everything's at. So if the, if the vocals are too loud, I can back off a bit yeah. or, you know, sometimes I can't hear that with the monitors when you're playing where I, where I find yeah, you know, it's just like recording, right? Like it's just, yeah. So sometimes I'll have the, the white AKGs on my head. So, yeah. Right. So, but uh, I'm, I've, I know it's taken me a while and I'm have gotten into now mixing the sound from my looper from the guitar, as well as just a pencil condenser mic as well to add acoustic. Yeah. So, and it works out great that if I'm using my tube screamer on the acoustic, I'll just get closer to the mic. So I get, wow. What I loved about those Who records back from the 70s was that, you know, a lot of the recording of those electric guitars, you could hear the strumming of the acoustic sound of the guitar. Exactly. And you mix that in and it was just like, oh, it's so powerful, you know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I kind of liked that balance. Yeah. The attack, it's like, yes, miking, not just miking the front of the kick drum, but miking the beater side too, like the, the batter side. Exactly. Click, yeah. click, click, click with the boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. It gives you the articulation. Yeah. He used to do that on a lot of metal records because the, the tone yeah. was so compressed that you couldn't hear the attack. So they would actually, while you're playing the part, they'd have a mic right yeah. by your guitar to hear the pick because the amp was going to lose all that sound. Yeah. Attack. Yeah. And it's just yeah. another sound to add to the, to the wall. Yeah. That's exactly. awesome. You got something coming up in September as well. Yeah. You know, I've decided, hey, if we're going all Beatles, then why not do Abbey Road? So that one's kind of freaking me out because I'm like, how am I going to do because? Like, seriously? <laughs> Like, you know, I do a live version of like Golden Slumbers to the end, you know, on my solo shows. So I've gotten, I've worked that around, including Ringo's drum solo, which, yeah. you know, uh, but, you know, certain elements of that. And of course, the other songs like Something and Come Together, I've played for a long time. Uh, but there's certain little challenges where it's like, oh, okay. And someone requested the other night, she came in through the bathroom window and I'm like, what a great compact little song that is. Yes. I've kind of taken it for granted, yeah, but it was like, just with an acoustic guitar, like that's the test, right? If you can play a song on acoustic guitar and it works, then it's great, right? Oh, boy, and boy. it was just how much fun it was and the, the, you know, the minor four in it, like it's just like, oh, it just, I loved it. I'm like, I forgot how much I love that song. So, so there's, there's lots, of, um, lots of cool things that, you know, I think are in Abbey Road, there'll be a challenge. Um, so I was, but I'm also thinking of why not do a different version of Because. So I'm also thinking about that and and you know how I can do that with a looper and maybe you know some some delay and some different things. So mm -hmm. I'm yeah, yeah, thinking yeah. that through. So I read off. Yeah, you got some time. watching, checking just for because because I know you've done. You, uh, Christopher did a live show. When, now when did you do? Uh, uh, which record was it? You did was it Sergeant Pepper? Yeah, did I did Sergeant Sergeant Pepper in 2017 because again, being one of my favorite records, it was <laughs> at a, a live show at the Zoetic. Yeah. Um, and man, what a great venue that was. That it's on Concession yeah. Street, beautiful old theater. Like it just, it was perfect for Pepper because it feels like a, a stage hall sort of, you know, English, yeah. 1920. Like it just has that that vibe of vaudeville kind of, yes. you know, yeah, the show the showy thing, you know. Um, and it was a cool challenge. So I had two different looping stations that I used, as well as I found a tabla sound on my phone that I could use, and I put that on for Within You Without You, and um, nice. you know, so it was it was it was a real challenge because like, how the heck do I do this? You know, like, and do <laughs> at least some sort of justice to it. We had a couple guests come on and sing some songs, and you know, because I've never been a fan of Lovely Rita, so it was nice to have. Uh, I, and actually, that was uh, Beck Jamison who joined me in that show, oh, man. as well as uh, Jennifer Beeler, another great singer from mm -hmm. the world. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that, and that was so much fun. So that was, and I'd love to do it again, but yeah. And, and Ed knows my looping abilities at the odd time and how very little I use it. So when you, when you do, it's, it's amazing watching you do like building them and adding all that stuff to it. Cause I'm, I'm just I, not that guy. I don't use them enough. Well, 
I was so bold. We did a Ringo tribute show, only one, because no one showed up. And that was a long story uh, as why there was no one there. But, you know, I won't go into why. Thanks, Brody. Um, but, um, <laughs> sorry, I said it. I said it. If you well, ever, I even, if I want even to know, that. we can talk. But, I um, even love that outside joke. It's yeah. approved. Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, you know, we're there and I'm like, I'm going to use my looper for the first time. I'm just going to do it live on stage for one of the Ringo songs. Biggest mistake I ever made. It was terrible. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Yeah. And, you know, I've told people who use loopers, know where beat one is. Always know where beat one is. If you know where beat one is and you're consistent between however many measures you're doing, yeah. you'll be fine. But if your tempo is off, if you don't know where one is, it's a, it'll be a disaster, you know? And, you know, because when you get out of that loop, you got to hit it on one. If you don't hit it on the same one, it's it's not going to work. Yes. It you quantizes know. to the next beat when you're in trouble. Exactly. Then it's like, <laughs> doom, doom. You know, so that's why, you know, having been, you know, uh, you know, uh, at home drummer when I first started that, you know, listening to beats and rhythms were crucial in helping me to find where one is. So, you know, so. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Got anything else there, Ed? Well, I was just going to say, unless you're Vinnie Kaluta, then who cares about the one? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. You know what that's I mean? <laughs> one? What one? What one? <laughs> yeah. There's lots of ones. <laughs> it, it, it's like, how I, I'm amazed at how he can do like it's just it's mind boggling because I'm like I'm trying to count it going huh you know yeah. I'm still stuck on the beginning of rock and roll to be quite honest it's like <laughs> okay what <laughs> that's, is it? that's not easy man it's not uh, no. it's not easy you know another one that's really bizarre is tell me something good by Rufus and Shaw oh, yes yes because normally a guitar especially in the reggae world will be on the upstroke right yeah. eh, eh, eh. Yeah. But that's oh, on the downbeat. Yeah, yeah. And that just, once you figured that out, and I mean, Frank, I'm pretty good at transcribing over here. <laughs> that's a little inside joke. Yeah. So, what I had to do and what, and what I've learned in the transcribing, in my head transcribing days is if I can't figure it out at the beginning, from the beginning to the start of the, of the um, regular time, then start here and work backwards. Right. You know, and that's the way I had to figure out that tune is I had to start and work back. Yeah. I hit my head against a brick wall time and time again, trying to figure it out from the start in. But yeah, a couple other tunes, Take It Easy has that weird intro like that. If you don't yeah. count backwards, um, uh, there's another one, a Fleetwood Mac song has one of those. Oh, um, uh, Don't, uh, Don't Stop? Not Don't Stop, the other one. Uh, Loving you. Yeah, cool. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go your own way. Go your own way. The guitar yeah. comes in on the end. Like, if you don't come in on the right spot, you're done. Yeah. You're done. You're done. You're done. Yeah. So, and this is an upstroke, I think he starts. Yeah, you just, yeah. you just come you know, uh, down at the end of, and then you're good. I mean, it's yeah. one thing to be intuitive, but when there's a whole bunch of others, because the rest of the stuff's going different, right? Yeah. Around it. And that's what makes it brilliant, too. Yeah. So, yeah, looping, timing. Time is one of those important yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, thank you so much. Hey, thank for you, Ed. out with us, brother. Speaking of nice time, we're running out of it. <laughs> well, nice to officially meet you too, Ed. And congrats That's on perfect. the company, guys. Again, right. the coffee's great. And just, uh, just yeah, looking forward to seeing when you do the tea thing, which I'm sure will be a long time, but that's okay. And yeah, well, we according, to, according to Frank, it's right around the corner. Well, right around the corner in our time means about right two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. things move way faster than you expect. It's like, yeah, yeah we'll get that next week and it's three months later. You're like, oh, that thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, don't we know it? Well, I'll be around waiting. Hey, <laughs> hey this has been awesome, dude. This You're a great dude. Pause. Let's do this again when we can do it in person. That would be awesome. Yeah, I would love that. that. Yeah, I we can actually play some music together. Yeah. That, that would be would, even, yeah. I would love that. Clink. I'll even play bass. Clink, clink. Oh, go up. Clink, clink. <laughs> dude. I'm you right here now. What the? Look at that. I can put a level on that. That's, dude, that's well done. But look at your cup. You got to get the cup. We gotta turn off. Yeah, there you go. You get, oh, a little bit more. Do you need some examples? <laughs> that is pretty weird when you're trying to point at something, eh? We have to look at who printed this because I'm, I'm holding it straight and it's an offset. That's okay.
can't uh, you know anyway it's weird when you're trying to point at something because remember I when you're doing the elton lammy thing and i was trying to point Arr. at the yamaha snare and i was like how do i uh, so remember the weathermen in the old days when they had that clear plexiglass screen they would write backwards so the camera's filming them behind it oh they, back in this this is like late 70s or through the yeah. 70s they would write with their left hand and backwards right that's crazy the skills you'd have to have back yeah, in the right now you just ching, ching, computer graphics and away you go yeah 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 rain 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 storm storm sun 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 blah 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 <laughs> We'll look out the window. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> anyway, man. That was, that was an awesome hang with Christopher Claus. What a great, great dude and great, great play. You know? Loved, loved it. Uh, I, yeah, I can't wait to actually uh, hang out with that guy and have a, have a tea with him or, uh, you know, coffee. Coffee. Another successful week, my friend. It's been a great week. Another coffee hang. <laughs> Doesn't, this just doesn't do it for me. I'm telling you, the <laughs> angle's just off. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. what? <laughs> yeah, I gotta get it in there. That's probably why I can't lift my shoulder anymore. <laughs> right. Hey, love you, brother. Have love a great you, week. Brother. Have yourself an awesome weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thank Same you all for with Thank us you. at Coffee Hang. Have a great week. Take care of yourself and take care of others. Yes. Peace.